Hello everyone, it is uh, Monday, June 26. It is 2317 New York local time. And in this video, I wanted to give you my advice if you are getting into um, ICT trading. You know, I know that I know that when Michael goes away uh, and when Michael stops making um, when Michael stops making videos that Inner Circle Trader is is gonna um, you know the fad is gonna wear wear off, uh, but his wisdom is gonna remain. Uh, this, the you know the algorithmic theory is gonna remain. Um, if you are struggling with learning um, ICT concepts, I I want to caution you with something. Um, I think I've talked about this before, but I, I, I do want to caution you with something. When you are using his concepts, you need to, number one, don't clutter up your chart with too many drawings. So you'll see that I mostly trade without drawings. Um, I've got two drawings here on the dollar index. The box here is just showing me this balanced price range, the midpoint of that. And then I've got our new week opening gap high and low. Um, other than that, I'll tell you how you can analyze a price chart without without even using drawings, just using the knowledge that you've you've gained. So number one, I'm going to look down lower. I'll give you the priority list of what you want to look for. The first thing that you want to look for is you want to look for inefficiencies in the marketplace. So I know that there are two buy, uh, sell side inefficiencies right here in the yellow box. I don't really need to have the yellow box here on the chart in order to see that. I can see that there's a little bit of separation between these two candles, so we're a little bit sell side inefficient here. Okay, I don't need the box for that. And I can also see that th there's a little bit of order flow here, a um, bit of consolidation here, which is why it would be my first target on the dollar index. As we come lower, I can see that we have more order flow or more structure here. and right now because price is pretty far away from here I don't immediately need to dig into what type of inefficiencies are here um, I do see that there's a wick inefficiency here in terms of liquidity so the first thing that you want to do is you want to look for inefficiencies in the marketplace those should be the priority inefficiencies are going to be the greatest draw on liquidity even even over liquidity points so over highs and lows you want to first focus on inefficiencies okay you want to look for inefficiencies in the marketplace if you don't know what inefficiencies in the marketplace are I do have a video it's my banner video on this channel um, there is a woman um, who is a very well studied ICT trader named Lumi Traders on Reddit Lumi Traders um, she definitely knows her ICT backwards and forwards um, and when you go on Reddit uh, or her Discord, uh, you'll see her charts. And she has a real mastery, and she's showing you the, the mastery that she has of ICT concepts. But in terms of using her charts, if you were to actually try and use them in my, this is my opinion, there's too many drawings on the chart. You don't need to literally draw out every single order block, every single BISI, every single SIBI. Um, the biggest moves in the chart really are going to be fairly obvious um, if you know what you're looking for. You're looking for liquidity, you're looking for inefficiency, with inefficiency being first. Okay, so when I'm trading, I prefer to trade with minimal drawings on the chart. So let's say, for example, we look at my Australian dollar long. I didn't really get long on the Australian dollar because of the Australian dollar. I, I looked over to the right of my screen. Okay, I'm always referencing the dollar index. When I saw that the dollar index was starting to turn lower, that we closed below structure, I know that our risk assets are going to move higher. So all of your forex is going to start to move higher. The next question in the the next question in the series of of using your ICT logic is if we know that the dollar index is moving lower and we know that our risk assets are moving higher, then which one do I want to go long on? Well, I'm going to look over here at our daily change percentage and I'm going to see, oh, it looks like the Australian dollar 
is the bullish leader. So if I have a limited number of contracts that I can trade, and I've got these Forex products here, so Australian, Pound, Canadian, Euro, Yen, New Zealand, and Swiss, I know that all of these should be green because the dollar index is red. These are all paired against the dollar. So if the dollar index is moving lower, if it's breaking structure, moving lower, coming into sell side inefficiencies, I want to get long um, foreign currency. So the next question is, well, which currency do I want to get long? And that would be, I want to look at the one that's already shown a willingness to go up. So I look at my price data, I see over here, okay, Australian dollar is moving up, dollar is moving down, Australian dollar is moving more, it's moving more bullishly than it's leading, it's our bullish leader compared to the other Forex products. So if I have a limited number of contracts, I'm only going to trade three Forex contracts, then which one do I want to pick? Well, I want to pick the one that is the bullish leader. So I want to pick the Australian dollar. It's the same thing when you look at your indices. If we know that our risk assets are, are looking to go higher, at least in the overnight session, which one do I want to pick? Well, I want to pick the one that's already shown a willingness to go higher. That's the Russell 2000. You know, NASDAQ is kind of sitting there. The, the YM is kind of sitting there. And the ES is kind of sitting there lethargically. And the, y, you know, the Russell's not really moving up the way that I want to see it, but it's not really the time for it to do that yet. Um, and then it, you know, it's the same thing with the metals. I know that the dollar index is moving down, so our metals should be moving up. I know that last week silver was very beat up to the sell side, so we're probably going to come up and reprice some of our buy side inefficiencies on silver. I know that silver, just looking here visually on the right hand side of the chart, on the, on the changes here, I know that silver looks to be leading the way. Now copper is also moving higher, so I got long copper, but gold is gold is kind of still sitting in its consolidation, you know, it's lagging behind. So ideally I'd probably just want to pump all of my contracts into silver, but I decided to split them up between silver and, and copper. Um, probably should have just gone with two silver contracts. It's gonna be the same thing with the energies. It looks to me like crude crude is relatively stronger right now than natural gas. So between crude and natural gas, I'm probably going to look to get long crude. So I don't really need to even use the drawings on the chart to see that. By the way, all of your liquidity targets are, are really visible without putting the line on the chart. I, I can see this high, I can see this high here, and I can see this high here. I can see our liquidity targets without drawing the lines on the chart, without cluttering the chart. I can see on crude oil our buy side inefficiencies. They're very apparent to me now that I'm looking for them. I don't need the boxes on the chart to see the buy side inefficiencies. And I know that crude appears to be, of our two energies here between crude and natural gas, crude is, appears to be the bullish leader. So if I were to get long in energy, it would probably be crude. Then at that point, I would just look and see, okay, can I get in on an inefficiency? I like to enter in on inefficiencies, preferably at the setup times. Um, so, with that being said, I didn't really need to use any drawings on the chart for any of that. The only drawings that I'm leaving and using on the chart are um, is the dollar index. So I can see that the dollar index has this little balanced price range here. All of Michael's PD arrays can invert, so price can trade through it and invert come lower including a including a balanced price range okay balanced price range price can trade back up to it invert it use it as resistance that's really the only box that i need on the chart in fact i would say the majority of your analysis should probably be done on the dollar index which is something that michael's been talking about really the dollar index it's king dollar it's it's going to affect everything so most of your analysis should should probably be geared towards the dollar index so with that being said, if you are having difficulty trading ICT, if you're having difficulty trading algorithmic theory, try using one or two concepts, maybe one inefficiency that you're looking at, one order block that you're looking at. Keep the drawings on the chart to a minimum. You already know that I don't use any indicators, that I think that indicators are nonsense. You know that I don't use volume profile. I use a naked chart for the most part. I don't like to have a lot of drawings on it um, when, I'm, when I'm trading. So. 
if you're wondering how I do that, I hope that this was a good explanation. Um, if you're having difficulty trading uh, ICT, if you're having difficulty trading algorithmic theory, start with the dollar index. You know, use your annotations, use your drawings on the dollar index. Uh, try to simplify things. Look just, you know, look for your most obvious nearest inefficiencies. Look for your nice and obvious liquidity targets. Like I know on the dollar index, there's liquidity right there. Don't need a, don't need a line to see that there's going to be sell side liquidity there. I also know that there's, there's going to be sell side liquidity down here because it's the low. So I know that both of these places are going to have sell side liquidity. That's, you know, I don't really need the line to see that. Um, as with anything, the more distance that you put between yourself and the price data visually, I don't agree with that. I am very opinionated on this in that you should be able to see price and time and I like to use my crosshair tool a lot. I just use the crosshair to you know identify visually where it is and then I don't like to put a lot of drawings on the chart. Um, if you are still trying to trade indicators where you have you know the price is covered up by moving averages, the price is covered up by all of the nonsense that you have on your chart, I am of the opinion that you should move away from that. So, you know, it's my opinion. Um, if you if you use volume profile, it's taken up half the screen on the right. You know, I'm of the opinion you shouldn't be doing that. Um, and there are professionals that that do that. I personally, I I, I don't I don't want to cloud. I don't want to visually distract myself and my pattern recognition. I don't want to visually distract it with a big with big fat volume bars on the right. That's also why I don't use, I don't open up the DOM unless I'm about to enter an order. Um, I don't like to open up the DOM because the DOM is, the depth of market is is a distraction. I, I, I don't care how many professionals use it. I, I don't agree with it. It is a visual distraction in my opinion. And I know that there are people who professionally trade the ladders. I think it's a visual distraction from what is salient and that is price. So with that being said, uh, I might use one or two drawings on a chart. Other than that, I can see it with my eyes and I can reference the dollar index. Most of my analysis is going to be on the dollar index and uh, looking for intermarket relationships from there. Um, inefficiencies and liquidity, really, once you start using them, they should pop out on the chart without you having to draw a box on them. Okay. Um, and God forbid you're still using a whole bunch of indicators that you can't see price. I, you know, if, if that works for you, God bless you. It never worked for me. It never will. So uh, that's my opinion. That's my advice. Um, if you're trying to get into this style of trading is, you know, go look at Lumi Trader's chart. You don't need to. It's just my opinion. I don't know if she actually trades those charts with all the drawings on them. I think it's visually distracting. I think you need to be keeping at all times an eye on what price is currently doing. And if you fixate your eyes on order blocks and, and these things, I, I think uh, they're distracting you from what price is currently doing. So just my opinion. Keep it simple. Um, that is that. Bye.